Jewish Meditation by Rabbi Arya Kaplan, A Practical Guide. Chapter 8, Visualization. Earlier, I spoke about the images that one sees when the eyes are closed. An important discipline in meditation is learning how to control these images. When one has learned how to control them, one can also learn how to hold an image in the mind's eye. This technique is known as visualization. A simple way to begin this discipline is to close your eyes and try to picture a letter of the alphabet. For example, the letter A. If you know the Hebrew alphabet, you can try to visualize the letter Aleph. Since there are Jewish meditations that use the letter Aleph, I shall use it as an example, although any other letter or figure could also be used. To begin a visualization meditation, just close your eyes and relax, allowing the images in the mind's eye to settle down. If you have been practicing mantra meditation, you may want to use it as a relaxing mechanism. In any case, after a few minutes, the images in the visual field will become easier to control. When the visual field is fairly calm, you can begin to try to visualize the Aleph. You may have an Aleph printed on a card and set the image of it in your mind, then close your eyes and try to picture the Aleph. Try to see it with your eyes closed exactly as you saw it with your eyes open. At first, this may be extremely difficult. The images that you see in your mind's eye are very difficult to control. If you have never done this before, it will be almost impossible the first time. One important aid in visualization is the name of the object to be visualized. If you are trying to visualize the Aleph, you may repeat the word Aleph to yourself periodically. You may even wish to repeat the word over and over as if it were a mantra. This not only relaxes the visual field, but locks the mind onto the Aleph. Repeating the word Aleph as a mantra will bring the letter into the mind's eye. Another good aid is to initiate the visualization exercise with a contemplation meditation. If you wish to visualize the Aleph, first spend several days contemplating the letter written on a card approximately 20 minutes a day. This will serve to fix the image in the mind. It will then be much easier to fix the Aleph in the visual field with the eyes closed. If you still encounter difficulty, the meditation session can be split between contemplation and visualization. Spend the first 15 minutes of a half hour session contemplating the Aleph, looking at it with your eyes open. Then during the next 15 minutes, you can try to visualize it with the eyes closed. The ability to do this exercise varies from individual to individual. Some are able to do it the first time, while others have to work for weeks before they can visualize a letter. With patience and perseverance, however, it can be done by almost anyone. Even after depicting the letter in the mind's eye, the average person will be able to hold the image only for several seconds. Then, like all such images, it will dissolve into other images. With time and practice, one eventually develops the ability to hold the image clearly and firmly in the mind's eye for extended periods. When this is accomplished, one has come a long way in gaining control over the mental processes. The ability to hold an image in the mind's eye is discussed at length in the Kabbalah texts dealing with meditation. Thus, the Sefi Yetzirah refers to two processes in depicting the letters, engraving, chakira, and hewing, chatziva. Both processes are seen as important if one is going to depict the letters. As discussed in the previous chapter, the Hebrew letters are seen as channels of the forces of creation, and as such, they can be used as a powerful means of drawing down spiritual energy. However, engraving and hewing are useful also for less esoteric forms of meditation. The term engraving denotes fixing an image in the mind's eye so that it does not waver or move. No matter what other images may arise in the field of vision, the engraved image remains there as if the image were actually engraved in the mind. Once a person has accomplished this, he can usually depict the desired image as soon as he begins his meditation, almost as a reflex. However, even when the image is clear and steady, engraved in the mind as it were, it is usually surrounded by other images. The next step is to isolate the image. Thus, for example, if one were visualizing the letter Aleph, one would attempt to isolate it and rid the mind's eye of all other imagery. This is known as hewing, or chatziva. The analogy is to hewing out a stone from the surrounding rock. The process consists in designating the desired stone and then hewing away the extraneous stone. One does the same thing in the mind, hewing away all extraneous imagery surrounding the desired form. All that is left is the image one desires. There are a number of ways of hewing away surrounding imagery. One way is to replace all the mental images other than the Aleph with pure white. First focus on the Aleph, allowing it to fill the mind. Then gradually hew away the images around the Aleph, replacing them with white fire. Imagine the white fire burning away the other images. Begin with a small spot of white fire at the top of the Aleph, using it to burn away a small spot of imagery. Let the white fire expand, burning away larger and larger areas. As it moves around the Aleph, burning away images on all sides. Finally, one sees the Aleph alone, written in black fire on white fire. In general, a visualization technique such as this is very valuable and can be used in other forms of Jewish meditation. Thus, many classical Kabbalah texts speak about Yehudim, or unifications, which I discussed briefly in the previous chapter. For the most part, the meditational method of Yehudim involves imaging various names of God and then manipulating the letters. 
In general, the method of Yehudim is highly advanced and requires some knowledge of Kabbalah. A good introduction to the method of Yehudim involves visualizing the Tetragrammaton, yud hey vav hey. This is similar to the technique of contemplating the Tetragrammaton described in the previous chapter, but here it is done without any external aid. Significantly, an exercise that entails visualizing the Tetragrammaton is mentioned in the Shulchan Arach, the standard code of Jewish law. It is also an introduction to a number of other more advanced techniques discussed in the Kabbalah. By visualizing God's name, one can attain a tremendous feeling of closeness to God. One actually feels the presence of God and experiences a deep sense of awe in the presence. A number of classical Judaic sources find an illusion of such visualization in the verse, I have placed yud heh vav heh before me at all times, Psalms 16, 8. This type of visualization is also useful during worship and prayer. Here, too, you can use contemplation as an introduction to visualization. If you find it difficult to visualize a tetragrammaton, spend a number of days contemplating the name written on a sheet or card. You can spend the first half of a session contemplating the written name and the other half visualizing it with the eyes closed. Eventually, you will be able to visualize it without using the card at all. Once you become adept at visualizing the name, you can use it for the simple yichud discussed in the last chapter. As discussed there, the vav and final hey of the name are the masculine and feminine forces of providence. When the vav and hey are separated, there is no connection between God and the world below other than his creative energy. Therefore, like a man and woman in love, the vav and hey yearn and long to be united to bring God's power to the lower worlds. When the vav and hey are united, God's presence becomes palpable and one can have a very strong experience of the divine. One accomplishes this yichud by visualizing the divine name, yud hey vav hey. One focuses on the vav and hey, making oneself aware of the longing and yearning of these two letters to unite. When the longing between the two letters becomes unbearable, they finally unite and a spiritual flood is released. One feels this as a torrent of divine energy flowing through the body and mind. One is bathed in the spiritual experience and overwhelmed by it, totally opened up like a vessel for the divine. Once proficiency in visualization is achieved, there are more advanced methods that one can learn. One such method, mentioned in the Kabbalistic sources, is to imagine the sky opening up and to depict oneself ascending into the spiritual realm. One rises through the seven firmaments, one by one, until one reaches the highest heaven. On this level, one depicts in one's mind a huge white curtain, infinite in size, filling the entire mind. Written on this white curtain, one visualizes the Tetragrammaton. The black of the letters and the white of the curtain become intensified until the letters appear to be black fire on white fire. Gradually, the letters of the Tetragrammaton expand until they appear to be huge mountains of black fire. When the four letters fill the mind completely, one is, as it were, swallowed up in God's name. On a still more advanced level, the letters appear to be not merely written on the curtain, but solid objects with both dimension and texture. One can see oneself actually entering into the letters, surrounded by their essence on all sides. Finally, one can reach the level where one sees the letters as living entities, as if each letter were an angelic being. One becomes uniquely aware of the life force and spiritual energy in each letter, of the significance of the letters and of the flow of energy between one letter and the next. One becomes aware of the unification of the giver with the receiver and of the ultimate male and female elements of creation. These last methods can bring a person to very high spiritual levels and should not be taken lightly. The original sources state that before attempting any of these more advanced methods, one should spend the entire day in preparation reciting the Psalms and studying Torah. Before beginning the meditation, one should immerse oneself in a mikvah, ritual bath, or any other natural body of water to cleanse oneself both physically and spiritually. Some sources also indicate that one should dress totally in white for these advanced meditations. This type of visualization can be dangerous and should not be attempted without an experienced spiritual master or a meditation partner. The Baal Shem Tov recommends that one have a partner for any type of advanced meditation. Then, if necessary, one partner can bring the other back to the real world. Visualization is valuable for another reason. In deeper forms of meditation, one often sees visions. As I discussed earlier, these visions should not be taken too seriously. Unless a person is very advanced and working under the tutelage of an experienced master, these visions are almost certain to be spurious. It is therefore recommended that when any visions appear, they be banished from the mind. If one learns to control one's visualization, then this is fairly easy. Some sources recommend that visions when they occur should be banished from the mind and replaced with the tetragrammaton. When one learns how to control the imagery in the mind's eye, there is much less danger that spurious visions will appear. One's meditation is then pure and undisturbed by low-level side effects.